Mr. Pottinger, you and, I, you and I have discussed a strategic and targeted decoupling of our economy from China. Any talk of decoupling, of course, gives the vapors to a lot of corporate America, since so many multinational companies long ago took their 30 pieces of silver from the Chinese Communist Party. But isn't China engaged in its own kind of decoupling, both trying to reduce its dependence on sole or limited source imports of raw materials from other countries, while also increasing the free world's dependence on China for manufactured and high-tech goods? Senator Cotton, that's exactly what, uh, what, what China is doing. And in fact, that strategy that you just described is one that's written and institutionalized in their latest uh, five-year plan. Uh, and I'll give you an example of it in, in action. If you look at what China's doing to Australia right now, Australia had the temerity to uh, suggest to the World Health Organization that the world try to find out the origins of this uh, virus that has now killed four million of our fellow souls and, and wrought catastrophe on the world economy. China, to punish Australia for suggesting that there should be an investigation, decided to use its leverage as a major market for uh, Australian exports. About 30% of Australia's exports go to China. It decided to start cutting off Australia's exports. Uh, exports of coal, uh, barley, beef, wine. And, uh, and, and then China uh, di didn't just punish them, but laid out a series of political uh, uh, demands. In fact, there was a list of 14 political demands that China made, including that Australia needs to stop challenging uh, Beijing's outrageous uh, claims over the South China Sea, that needs to roll back its own laws uh, that are designed to uh, counter malign influence and espionage, and that it needs to muzzle the free press in Australia, so it no longer criticizes the Communist Party. So this gives you a taste. Australia is a guinea pig for this new strategy that you just described, and it's, it's being employed against other countries as well. It's, it's one that they plan to employ uh, uh, against the United States if and when they achieve uh, the point where they no longer believe they need access to our capital and our technology, which is primarily stolen, but in some cases willfully handed over by um, uh, foolish uh, 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 business leaders who, who uh, have the fantasy that it's somehow going to get them access to the China market. Uh, so the, that's, that's my view on that, Senator. Thank you. Um, so, so China is engaged in this kind of strategic decoupling from the American economy and really from the free world's economy. Since that's the case, doesn't it make sense that we should go forward with our own kind of targeted decoupling so we can do it on our own terms? Yes. Yes. Uh, and certainly in, in many of the areas that you outlined in your own paper uh, a couple of months ago, uh, the Beat China paper, all of, the, all of the areas that China has identified in its Made in China 2025 strategy, that all, all of the high-tech sectors that it wants to dominate in the 21st century are areas where we should be proactively um, uh, and, and selectively decoupling from. Yeah. Um, you, you mentioned, mentioned uh, Australia commenting on the origins of the Wuhan coronavirus. What are your thoughts on the origins of that coronavirus and whether it's worthwhile to investigate all possible origins to include the possibility that it leaked from the labs in Wuhan? Well, I, I think that the preponderance of, of circumstantial evidence, and it's important to note that it is still cir circumstantial evidence, weighs in favor of the hypothesis that this uh, was an accidental leak from a laboratory and not a natural zoonotic uh, event. Um, China does not want us to actually find the answer to the, the question of, of, of what exactly happened. And I, I think that a bipartisan uh, commission should be quickly established that has subpoena power. I think that we need to halt gain-of-function research and take, take the lead globally uh, in really reinstituting an Obama administration ban on gain-of-function research, which was designed to help predict the current pandemic but may have actually seeded it. Uh, and I, I think one other area would be to start building a, uh, a surveillance network um, for, um, you know, the, the technology is there and, and with a little more effort uh, could be quite powerful at detecting um, uh, uh, pathogenic disease uh, in, in, through, a, through a global um, uh, surveillance network. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree, agree with you. That all the evidence points towards the labs, and I mean all the evidence. There's not a single piece of evidence 
that points towards that stupid food market the Chinese Communist Party used as a cover story. Uh, but I also agree with you that China doesn't want us to discover it, so I'm very uh, skeptical that we'll ever get direct evidence of the origin in the labs, but we can make reasonable inferences based on what we know in common sense, as you have, Mr. Pottinger, uh, that this virus originated in those labs and China needs to face grave consequences for unleashing this plague on the world. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Cotton. Let me recognize Senator Blumenthal, please. Thank you, Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you 